I must hurry. George Hamilton is trapped in his sunbed. <laughs> Stupid woman, you're treading something. That's where the peacocks go to the bathroom. Over here. <laughs> I've got a key to that gate, you destructive woman. Wait for me, wait for me, Madge. Madge, of course the door is locked. You think George leaves his door open the trap? Father was a sailor, for heaven's sake. Get up there like a rat up a road and then faster, faster. Oh, it's unnatural. That woman's the missing link. She's spider woman. Go on, Madge, break that window now. I'm not paying for that, not the way you broke it. Yeah, what's that scrubby smell? Somebody's cooking. It smells like a juicy hamburger. No, it isn't. It's George Hamilton. Madge, come on down. Come down and open the door. You took a long time. <laughs> help! Help me! Help! Help! We're coming, darling. Who's that? It's Edna, your oh, neighbour. Lift it, Madge, lift it. Oh. Go and pump iron, Madge. Work up those muscles. Oh, George, we get the girl. And I, I oh. thought I was going to burn oh. to death in there. I can't move can't it, move darling. It. Madge will do it soon. Madge, help me, will you? What's the matter with this machine? Well, this is a new one I'm working on called Hamilton. I, I, I've got it working so it comes down like a waffle machine, but it won't go back up. Is it your own invention? Yes, my own, my own. Oh, there's obviously a glitch in the system, yeah, George. Yeah, it's a teething problem. Oh, how did your career begin, George Hamilton? <laughs> you, you're not doing an interview, are you? It's a way of soothing your nerves. Are we on air? Well, it's uh, just hi, a home This is George Hamilton for Fast Hand. This is my particular sun tanning cream. Oh, please. No, no. I also use an exfoliant. No commercials, I'm afraid, George. We can't have blatant promotion oh, on my well, show. Okay. George, what's that bathrobe doing here? That's mine. Oh, oh, oh. The That's bathroom. my bathrobe. Oh, I was going to bring it back. Oh, yes. Like the cup of sugar I lent you about a year ago. You haven't returned that yet. I had guests there. I had guests. I've got guests now. I'm doing a talk show. Madge, quickly. Quickly, Madge. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, Excuse oh, I, George. Oh, I'll see you later, yeah. now. How am I going to get out of here? Help me. George, I'll be back. We'll remember. Don't worry. We'll Help. remember to Help come me. back. Help me. Help. Poor thing, I hope he manages to struggle out of that. I hate to admit failure, but I have failed him, I'm afraid. He'll be beef jerky very soon. <laughs> Mind you, beef jerky, many women would be very happy to chew. <laughs> well, Burgess. Hello, yes, darling. My love. Oh, my love. What's that you've got? A I note? I've got something. For, oh, I forgot. Oh, I thought you might have Thank forgotten. You're getting behind. Dear Edna, by the time you read this, I, it'll be too late. Oh, how ghastly. <laughs> I hung on for nine and a half minutes. It seemed like nine and a half weeks. <laughs> See you at Spargo's. Kim. Oh, isn't that lovely? Yeah. Impatient little minx. But meanwhile, our next uncancelled guest, ladies and gentlemen, it's the chivalrous, the charming, the chatty, the cherubic and cheeky Chevy Chase! <laughs> Ringo, Chibby, sit down here, darling. Oh, the badge, Madge. Oh, where's my bridesmaid? To get it myself. Oh, look at her handbag. Oh, this purse. Oh, like a glimpse of hell, this woman's purse. 
There's your little label. I'll just put it on here, darling. Corn, I happen to know. I've done my homework. <laughs> and I happen to know your real name is Cornelius. I do. <laughs> oh. You're very visible now, and I love what I see, but you've been invisible not all that long ago. Oh, that's right. I think I like you even more when you're invisible than now that you are visible. But if you were invisible, are there a few little things you'd like to do? Boy, I don't know. The first, the first thing I think that would come to me would be to sneak into your boudoir. Oh, Chevy. I'd fly in there. Would you? I'd fly in there and I'd give you a high colonic you would never forget. What? I, 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 I had no answer for that. That's a very well, tough question. I... Let's just sit here and meditate for a moment. If I were invisible, and by the way, if you're invisible and you flitted into my boudoir, you could do as you will with me. Oh, Chevy. God bless you. But up to a point, but <laughs> you give the impression of uh, being tiny? very tidy, no, not at all. neat, oh, neat, and well turned out. Why, thank you. Does that conceal a well, a restless spirit, perhaps an inner untidy person? Is there something a little bit disorderly inside you? This is an in-depth question. <laughs> well, if I may answer it, uh... you may. You've got uh, there's, all the there's time a little in the corner world. of my my mind that's untidy. There are mice in there, and uh, of course, uh, there's a kind of an untidiness in my drawers. In your drawers? Yes, my my bureau drawers. Oh, your bureau yeah. drawers. I thought that's an old-fashioned expression. No, it, no, it shouldn't. I know. I didn't mean uh, my drawers. A, you know, there's a wholesomeness too, which I think is deceptive about you. Yes, absolutely. Because I think there are probably unwholesome. Little mice in your drawers as well. <laughs> There's a little mouse in my drawers right now, yeah. But there... Kim has left quite a bit of equipment lying around. But I... <laughs> I thought maybe I'd sat on a mouse when I first sat down, and then I went, couldn't be. <laughs> there are people in your business who wouldn't mind that at all. That's right. However... And, and who would they be? I wouldn't know them. You wouldn't know I them. Wouldn't know I them. wouldn't know them, and I never listened to those stories invented by malicious people. Would anybody on this stage know those people? No. No. Not at this time. But particularly since it isn't a stage, it's a private home. However. Oh. Sorry. Your children. However. Be that as it may, wholesomeness. Let's get it back. I'm so glad to be here. I just can't wait to hear what the next question is and the answer. You know, my intellect has been stretched in so many directions. <laughs> by you in one direction and by little Kim in another. <laughs> what was that on her, uh, her navel? It was there? a little... her navel? Yeah. It was a tattoo. It was a real tattoo? I think it was real, but I didn't have time to spit on it and rub it hard. Ah. Now we're talking. I think... Now we're talking. But you would have liked to, wouldn't you? I, you know... Well, this will be cut out, Chevy, won't it? this will be cut out, yeah, so Yeah, but you'd sunny. like to suck that tattoo right off. Though. I would have. Yeah. And then do a little dance. <laughs> I, know what the, I know that feeling. I think you would have got there first, though, Chevy. No, I, I think there. so. I would have been there with nothing on. <laughs> there are senior citizens watching this. <laughs> God help them. There are. My servants, for example. <laughs> now... What? Gaga! Oh, come down. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my granddaughter, Yasmin Everidge! Hello, <laughs> oh, darling. Uh, this is Mr. This is Mr. Chevy Chase. Hello. This is Yasmin. Hi, Yasmin. How are oh. you? Oh, nice to meet you. Come over here, Yasmin. What is it, darling? Sit on my knee. Shall I leave? No, stay there. All darling. right. Sit there. Oh! People say she's the image of me. I don't see it. I don't see it either. I don't. She takes after some other strange branch of the family, not mine. What is it, Yasmin? I want a glass of milk and a cookie, Gaga. 
glass of milk and a cookie, certainly. Madge! Off you go with Auntie Madge. Read her a bedtime story, some old New Zealand folk tale. <laughs> the story of your life, that'll put her to sleep. <laughs> Bye, Gaga. Oh, Gaga. Goodbye, darling. <laughs> oh, look at Madge trying to come between me and my granddaughter. Typical, typical. <laughs> So is Burgess Meredith. It's a tug of love household, this. It's the eternal rectangle here. Now, you're a professional poker player, Chimby. No, I I'm not. Know. No. You play oh, cards. Oh, you're being so... Well, not professional, but you love playing poker. Yes. Do you play it alone? Mm. No. You're, no. You're looking for something you here. You play it with a little group. I don't I know do. about I, poker. Yes, I we, we have a little one. group. Who's in that group now? Steve. Steve. Johnny. Martin. Maybe. Johnny. Johnny. Oh, you've got me there. Mm. <laughs> yes, name someone that, that famous. Was smart. Carl Reiner. Carl Reiner. Uh, Neil Simon. Oh, the, ne the Neil Simon mm -hmm. the, with Simon and Garfunkel. Yes. <laughs> Lovely. I play, <laughs> I play a game with a little group of women. Little high-powered women. Uh, once a week, we have a weekly twister game. Do you know the game Twister? Yeah. yeah. You play it on a sort of plastic waterproof mat, a bit like, a bit like an incontinence sheet. And you... <laughs> you don't know about that yet, but... Um... You put it... <coughs> hope. And you put it down on the ground. It's got circles and different colours on it. Is it absorbent? Uh... Absor probably. Yes. And... And you sort of put one foot there and another foot there, and it's lots of fun. I play it with Madge, my bridesmaid, and Gloria Stein and Barbara Walters, Goldie Horn, Martina Navratilova. She's very keen. And uh, talking of Johnny, uh, who was that Johnny? Well, I can't remember his name. You've guest hosted a talk show, haven't you? Oh, Shirley? I tried, yeah. Yes, it's yeah. not easy, oh, is it? it's not easy. Well, you must well know that because you're doing all the talking. Well, you see, what's good about a good talk show host is that they allow the other person to get in a word edgewise. <laughs> That's one theory, anyway, Chevy. No, no. I hope there's no resentment. Here. No, please, I'm not a talk show host. I do other things for a living. But what I really meant was that Johnny is a good talk show host because he listens well and makes his guests look good. And I really stink at that. I wasn't good. You at look it. It good in hard. spite of my efforts to the contrary, darling. You do. <laughs> it's just that I have a different theory. I think of a talk show as, well, as a monologue interrupted by total strangers. <laughs> I. No, no. This is one of my theories. I'm writing a bit of a treatise on it. But being, being a male host is easier. Being a female talk show hostess has got its hazards. Because you can get, oh, undesirables can come on. That's why this whole house is booby-trapped, Chevy. Uh -oh. If someone comes on that I don't like the look of, yeah. darling... What happens? I'm afraid I terminate them. Oh. I do. I've got some technology here. It's very high-powered. You see this? this? Look, look at this. Ooh. Now, this is my security scanner. This button operates my front gates. <laughs> this redirects the traffic, so guests arrive and they go straight off in the other direction again. <laughs> I can't remember what this button was for. Well, why don't you, why don't you push it? No, no. Oh, I don't go ahead have and push it. All right, I will. Go ahead. <laughs> I've ejected Chevy. Oh, dear. Oh, forgive me, forgive me, viewers. I should have remembered this button is, is strictly for emergencies only. They told me only to use it if Mickey Rooney was on the show. Well, we'll find out what's happened to Chevy after this break.